JT, is, are you in the in the new office? Uh, J- but JT, by the way, for for our listeners and for our guests, is uh, becoming all professional on us now and is actually <laughs> building. Uh, what 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 do you call it? A studio, an office? What is what is a cooler yeah, sound? Office. It's a big open room. I got tired of tripping over cables and light stands and stuff. Like I just need to to find somewhere that's not this tiny little ten foot by nine foot converted bedroom. Um, then it's good. Yeah, I've got my little obligatory gear wall behind me that all the YouTubers do. I'm building a <laughs> fake like a volume with three TVs, El Cheapo uh, LED wall. Probably about five sets in here now. So it's 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 pretty cool. That's I've I've been enjoying it. Yeah, I mean, it was about time. I've been doing this stuff for like seven years now, still, you know, <laughs> struggling with the a, a tiny little room and my daughter screaming downstairs and have to restart the line. It's like, you know, bless her heart, but I need to get some work done. <laughs> what do you think? Do, do, do people need more equipment for recording or for uh, what would you call it? Applied art, uh, like uh, visual art, because here we have visual artists as well. And us are, I wouldn't call us artists, but uh, people who use scream into a microphone. <laughs> Schmucks. Yeah. What do you guys yeah. <laughs> I used to have a lot of equipment because I used to do a lot of uh, videography myself. I I've shot like, I've made, I've directed and produced like 50 music videos uh, in my career. Wow. Um, and I used to shoot them because I used to think, oh, oh, I'll be a proper filmmaker. And my whole process has been a, uh, a process of minimalization of everything I own. Mm-hmm. Uh, I have, I sold my cameras. I gave away my, my chroma key stuff. I got rid of my lights. I even built my own lighting system, which... It oh, was wow. it was really ghetto. It was uh, uh, power bars with these plug-in uh, light outlet things. You could like plug a light outlet into a thing, and I would make these mm-hmm. light banks out of power bars, and I oh, put cool. them in like washing <laughs> tubs that I would cover with wax paper to build like floodlights, and like oh, yeah. uh, adapt the scale of them depending on what I needed. And I built like my own Fresnel lenses and stuff because I was so <laughs> cheap. Uh, and I just threw all that stuff in the garbage. It looked like a crazy person's uh, garbage day. Uh, it was only a matter of time before you electrocuted yourself anyway, so that's probably oh my, for the best. Yeah, it was really dangerous. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and so I was just, at a certain point, I was like, no, I want nothing. I just want a box. I want a yeah. single PC. And uh, it has been a process of like just reducing it to, because now I have like this giant Cintiq screen. And mm. I just work on that that's it that's awesome. and then i have like that, a closet full of shit that i will never use that i should always get rid of yeah i watch a lot of you know those youtube uh like the desk tours and stuff and they always look so aesthetic and things you know, like but they don't show you the cables that are running everywhere and all the garbage they have to turn on for every everything that they do i'm like man i just want to use my laptop more and more i found like <laughs> i get every cable out of here i swear if i see one more dongle <laughs> i'm gonna lose my mind i've got a lot la- i like to use a laptop and a wake them for drawing but mm. i mean like to hook up this mic and headphones to talk i have to use a adapter because mm. macs don't have any usb <laughs> ports anymore and you know so what? my desk does look like a jumble of yeah, wires just to yeah, I've currently got an XL, a poorly run XLR cable and a long coiled Audio Technica audio cable draped over my lap because I don't want to <laughs> keep this on my desk at all times. I'm like, I'm just going to put it up for this, the recording, and then I'm going to stuff it back in the drawer. <laughs> Yeah, like I, 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 I bought a desk that is like uh, basically wireless. You plug it into the electricity and then it has uh, like electric outlets on top of the desk. So the cables are basically invisible up until I, nice. like uh, fucking JT made me buy a goddamn my, uh, MacBook. And now just for me to hook it up <laughs> to basic fucking devices, I need th- 300 different converters and 700 cables so that it works properly because it's, you know, not the Apple you certified. You need one USB-C so. cable. You yeah, and then one. it's connected to this massive fucking adapter <laughs> thing. But Jesus Christ, talk about first world problems or whatever the fuck. Speaking yeah. of first world problems and equipment, didn't you hear about that guy? I think that was like three years ago or four years ago that was like a live streamer and had like this like first floor office filled with like fancy cameras and like uh, basically a recording studio and so on. And he just got robbed. Like uh, mm. people would oh, yeah, sit yeah. in a car outside, wait for his stream to finish. He would go home and they would just rob the shit out of it. Obviously Oof. fucked up, not funny. 
but kind of fucking hilarious. Like robbing a streamer, <laughs> it just sounds funny. I'm sorry. Yeah. Should have been on stream. That would have gotten mm-hmm. good numbers. Robbing a streamer plus time equals comedy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Objectively correct. Objectively correct. And not much time either. <laughs> no. Yeah, we're talking like a week, you know, like a couple days even if it's a weekend, long weekend. <laughs> I, I'm honestly like I, I expected uh, ever since the live stream was invented a lot more like uh, live stream uh, killing sprees and like shit like oh that. Oh, my God. No, like genuinely, like all these like yeah. fucked up individuals that do it, they pre-record it. But motherfucker, what if you get killed and then they take the fucking GoPro off your head and shit? Like just properly mm. live stream that stuff and it will forever be uh, etched into random TikTok scro- scrollers' minds, you know? Oh, I, I just am watching my little dances and my little uh, routines and all of a sudden, oh, there you go, a beheading, beheading, which is quite literally the biggest difference between I would call it uh, pre-2008 internet and post-2008 mm-hmm. internet. Uh, obviously, this is like borderline fallacy and you know, that's not really how PTSD works, but for sure, you you know, people who are like, I don't know, 25 plus now, uh, all those hours that we've spent on live leaks, etc., and 4chan like uh, uh, boards probably influenced our mental psyche at least to a, a, a certain degree. Uh, well, let me let me tell you about being uh, 40. And, you know, back in my day, we had Rotten.com. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so, Pain so JPEG. I, I feel like I saw the worst things. I saw everything that you could see, I would think, by the time I was, you know, 17 or whatever. But they, I did, you know, there have been some live streaming mass uh, shootings, but I think mm-hmm. they've done a decent job of like taking them down really quick and mm-hmm. erasing all like people who copy them and post them. But yeah. probably less so now that Musk is in charge of Twitter and there's like. Yeah. A lot more uh, disinformation, and there'll just be like a live streamer or a guy live streaming, a uh, you know, mass killing, and then there'll be like a community note underneath. That will say, this is not good. <laughs> yeah, live killing. Yeah. Live <laughs> killing, not good. There was that one recently that was just incredibly dystopian. It was some kid, and he had you know, a proper magazine. I think he had a drum mag or something and whatever gun he was carrying. And the commenters, they were just like roasting him for his accuracy and his KD. It's like, Jesus Christ, is this what we've come to? Because he wasn't hitting anybody. And so Mm. people were just, instead of, I don't know, I don't even know why you'd watch that and then have the capacity to comment something like that. Oh, I don't know. Wild, wild times we're living in. I can't wait to see what's next. (laughs) Yeah. Information made us no good. Let me tell you. Yeah. (laughs) Honestly, the internet was a mistake. I I remember early Facebook without content moderation. Yeah. And the amount of people getting blown up. I remember there was this one time a guy from high school. uh, This is near the end of my Facebook career. uh, (laughs) A guy from high school posted a compilation video of partisans from the Middle East getting blown up by... Yeah. Uh, helicopter fire or rockets mm. or Americans basically shredding human beings. And I flagged it for content moderation. And the content moderation said, no, this is fine. It's fine to oh show God. Arabs dying. Jesus. And that's when I was like, this sucks. The internet sucks. Yeah. <laughs> Shut it down. Pull I, the plug. I made a video about like uh, Turbo Folk and like war music and the war in the Balkans and memes that come out of that, blah, blah, blah. And in the whole video, I have like footage upon footage upon footage of, you know, ex Yugoslav nationalities firing real guns at each other, tanks, fucking houses being lit on fire, shit blowing up, etc., etc. And I only had around 15 seconds because I made a, par- a parallel between how the fighting was done with uh, how the fighting was done, I believe, in uh, uh, during the Iraq invasion. And, there, and in those 15 seconds, it was like uh, American soldiers under fire and shooting at uh, whatever they perceived as the, as the enemy. And those 15 seconds got flagged as, you know, I'm mm. showing combat footage and I'm showing, uh, you know, exertion of aggression, et cetera, et cetera. While, you know, the non-humans, I guess, when it's the yeah. uh, the 
Falcon monkeys or whatever fucking shooting yeah. each other, then it's absolutely fine. Uh, then, you know, this is historic footage. This is journalistic footage, et cetera, et cetera. But uh, mm. when it's one of our guys getting shot, then it's, you know, it's insensitive and, uh, and taboo. Uh, but yeah. I saw, a video, I saw a video this morning of a uh, Palestinian guy in Gaza carrying limbs of his yeah. children in a, in yeah. a like grocery bags and you know i don't know i don't know what to do with this stuff it's like you know they're not going to show that stuff on on mainstream news and it is no. it's kind of important to be aware of but it's also just insane that you have this device in your pocket that we're like addicted addicted to but you also need it's just like oh all your mm. friends are in there all your news for me a lot of my and my job is associated with it and then you just like go through this feed and there's like people making jokes and there's a guy with pieces of his uh, dead son's arms and then mm. here's someone promoting their book and uh it's just a psychotic way to experience the universe yeah we were not we were not built to consume this much yeah <laughs> In such an easy fashion, yeah. yeah, it's wild. Ah, man. No, and we're all I, insane been... now. We're all yeah. insane. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like I've this last this last week, I, I felt like I've been taking crazy pills. I'm like, what the 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 difference in what I'm seeing online from these sources, you know, sources from around the world, and what is being shown in Western media is just nuts. I'm like, surely, surely, some someone will acknowledge the the extent of of the the horror here, but no. Nobody. I was in, I take this online directing class, an animation directing class, and I was in the class and one of the guys used to live in Israel and the teacher of the class was asking like, oh, did you get out? Of, are you in Israel right now? What's going on? And then yeah. the entire, everyone in the class, very normal people, definitely not mm -hmm. as online as I am. Everyone been like, oh, it's so horrible what's mm -hmm. happening to the Israelis right now. Yeah. And I'm just like. Because I don't, I don't want to alien. Like it's a class. Right. Yeah, nice yeah, people. Yeah, yeah. They don't, don't know. Yeah, I'm not yeah. going to attack or freak <laughs> yeah. out. But just like hearing one person being like, "Oh, it's so horrible." I really wanted to go on birthright, but they they suspended it for some reason. Oh. Da 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 da. And I'm just like you, you guys. I'm <laughs> um right on the like, edge of yelling at yeah. you. It's like on the uh, one hand, you're like you're so overwhelmingly furious with these people, and on the yes. other, it's like, well, they're, to what extent is it their responsibility to educate themselves on the matter? Like, well, this is the first genocide in history that has been fully broadcast, live streamed. All of the information mm -hmm. is available at your fingertips. It's just a matter of you have to go out and, and collect it. And I guess there is a disconnect for people who aren't terminally online. Like they don't know how to collect it. Like they're if they're not presented, if they're not spoon fed the information on on Fox or CNN or MSNBC or whatever, th it might as well not exist. And that's it's it creates such a divide. It's but wild. But they still want to voice their fucking opinion. That's the yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, that's what, yeah. And they're the most adamant about it too. Yeah. And there's this intellectual self-defense, like it, it, it's a real slippery slope because if you're like, okay, well, the news is lying to me, that's mm -hmm. that's a fucked up thing to have to process because then you need a completely new ontology. It's like, yeah. oh, the news lies. If the news lies, then what can be true? And then if you lack uh, a model of the world after that, which is usually a real problem with people who get cognitive dissonance, is that there's no succinct model waiting in the wings to give like mm -hmm. there's no there's no marxism waiting yeah. in the wings to like swoop in and be like okay let's talk about production yeah uh, there's no yeah. materialism to help people uh parse the world after that when you mm -hmm. lose that e you go off into cloud cuckoo land and you see that with yeah. QAnon. like the mm. second you're like oh fake news I uh, JFK is going to come back and he's going to run for president <laughs> yeah. with Donald Trump and uh, I'm going to take Any a bunch now. of drugs yeah. and hang out in Pittsburgh and now all my savings are gone. Yeah, it, well, it's uh, the type of worldview that might lead one to join the Libra gang. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Welcome everyone to yet another episode of The D Program and today's a very special day indeed because we have not one but 
two impressive comrade artists joining us on our little disorganized adventure. Ben Clarkson, the visual king of the left, a cartoonist, artist, <laughs> and animator. His art has been shown all over the world from New York to Hong Kong, and he is one of the heads behind Justice Warriors, a hilariously brilliant, slightly political comic available now. <laughs> and if he's one head then who's the other? Well, nothing special, just a two-time Pulitzer finalist, Eisner-winning comic editor, Matt Bors. He's been published in everything from The Guardian to The Nation, founded The Nib, which has published over 6,000 comics, and a generally, generally funny guy. Thank you guys for coming on the show. Please, for those in the audience who, for some reason, might not have interacted with your work, could you please tell them a bit about yourself ben oh me <laughs> you are uh, the king the king of the le- the illustration king of the left goes yeah. first i'm the visual king of the left i'll take it but this I'll is a dual that. monarchy so like you have the other <laughs> kingdom with uh with matt obviously but please i get ahead. the western kingdom western kingdom is mine uh you got like intro yeah. ruining friendships 101 yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm fucking you can have the Eastern Empire. We are working on a, a two-state solution for this. <laughs> <laughs> oh. uh, I'm Ben. I'm an animator and illustrator working out of Montreal. And uh, yeah, we have this beautiful book, Justice Warriors, that we've been telling people about. What, what do I do here? You go, man. <laughs> that's, that's, that's fine. That's fine. Okay. <laughs> Let's How see do I here. introduce myself? Uh, Fuck! Yeah, I mean, I'm Matt, the the second head of Justice Warriors, of the, of the two-headed Hydra of Justice Warriors. Um, I mostly am a, have been a political cartoonist. I was a political cartoonist for 18 years. And if you've been online a lot, you probably saw some of my work. I did that uh, relatively well-known comic, the guy in the well, Mr. Gotcha. That mm-hmm. kind of is used Legendary. as a reaction meme. Hopefully other comics that people are aware of besides that one. Um, and then two years ago, three years ago, I hooked up with Ben and we started working on this comic book. Sick. So it took uh, for two years you guys developed it. Well, Yeah, I, Ben had been working on it. Yeah, I've been developing it as an animated series for about a decade. Very slowly. That's why it took a decade. And I was trying to get this comic off or not comic, animated series off the ground. And I loved Matt's work. And so I just started DMing him on Twitter. And he checked his junk mail one day. So we actually <laughs> connected. Uh, and uh, yeah, we once once Matt was on board and started like picking away at this thing that I built, it really exploded into something really interesting. And uh, we decided to work on it as a comic because you don't need like $20 million to make a comic. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yeah, just five, yeah. But okay. Yeah, Yeah. Uh, we'd love that. uh, (laughs) (laughs) So before we even like properly begin, I uh, just want to put it out there or kiss some ass that I've read through Justice Warriors and it was absolutely fantastic, hilarious, brilliantly written and designed, but most importantly, class conscious as fuck. Uh, I deeply recommend our listeners check it out and explore it. Uh, It will definitely stay with you, that I can promise you. Now, let's, uh, I guess, start our conversation with this specific piece of work without hopefully spoiling anything significant that this was very fucking difficult for me because I want to talk about so many different aspects and <laughs> yeah. plot twists and so on, but unfortunately I can't. So uh, yeah, please give our uh, listeners an overview of what the story is about. Justice Warriors is a story that takes place, uh, the place is very important, in a city in the future, uh, it's sort of nondescript distant future, call, and the city's called Bubble City. And Bubble City is a massive domed utopia where there is no want, no crime, equality has been met. The the liberal dream has been realized. And the only problem is just outside of the Envirodome is a vast, uh, almost unending slum of mutated, disgusting figures. And this slum is called the Uninhabited Zone. And the Uninhabited Zone is full of crime and 
racial hatred and discrimination, and somebody has to take care of that slum. And so the Bubble City Police Department, the BCPD, uh, has been charged with policing the zone and make sure nothing bubbles up to uh, challenge (laughs) the rule of the bubble. And so it's a satire of police media. It's a satire of copaganda, and we sort of use the form of cop shows and cop stories and cop movies to uh, satirize and skewer and reveal class structures, social structures. We go after economics, crypto, fascism, woke language, AI, communications, social media. It, it's a it's a satire of our society. Uh, it's a satire of every aspect of society. We call it a mega satire. And mm. It follows two cops, Swamp Cop and his new partner, Shit, who's an anthropomorphic <laughs> pile of shit. Yeah. And <laughs> they I do police so shootings and solve crimes. Uh, when I reach the fucking page and I'm looking at it, I'm like, did they really make him a shit? Is he actually a shit? <laughs> and then I keep, I'm like, okay, maybe he's going to, because I didn't look at the cover. And then I'm like, maybe he's not going to be like uh, a constant character. But no, uh, so a piece of shit in a uniform main character. is continuously the main <laughs> fucking character. It's absolutely incredible. By the way, why did you, uh, uh, shit I get, but um, where did the inspiration come for for a Swamp? Swamp Cop. It isn't pig is like too a, easy, right? Pig is too easy. Like, you, you could have gone that route. <laughs> yeah. It's like, yeah. yeah. Swamp Cop, it's hard to describe, because Swamp Cop has been around for like 10 years, and he just, like, I just started drawing him. I'm, I, a lot of this stuff starts very visually for me, and he just sort of stuck around. But my, I, I guess the logic of him is like uh, a little bit like drain the swamp. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. he is a creature of the from the Black Lagoon. He's a mutated disgusting uh, amphibian thing like he's in both worlds he's of the he's of the swamp he's of the bog Mm -hmm. and he's unappealing He's Shrek. He's basically orange Shrek. <laughs> it's Shrek as a cop. And, and I love the uh, addition of him being, uh, let's call it, uh, that, those types of guys aren't single. I call them wifeless. <laughs> like, <'cause> yeah. they, <laughs> uh, blame half of their fucking issues on the fact that they haven't managed to find a partner and they haven't managed to find a partner because they will end up blaming all their issues on the partner. Uh, but Swamp, mm-hmm. it, Swamp is married to the law. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, definitely an incel and, you know, has some uh, mental health issues. And then shit, I think despite his exterior uh, appearance and smell is and, and, you know, the fact that he is a cop and he gets involved in a uh, what we call a police involved shooting in our world. Yeah. I forget what we call it in uh, in the book, but he uh, he is somewhat likable, naive rookie uh, type. And, you know, shit is only, it's, it's S-C-H-I-T-T. It's the German and it's, he took his wife's name. He's, he has a uh, hot wife. Very hot wife. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I know that, that, that influences the interaction between uh, him and his colleague, but then also additionally influences, because as we found out, she's not only hot, but uh, she has very key information for this grand enemy which they are fighting. Uh, man, I'm trying so hard not to spoil shit. But, uh, <laughs> well, we gotta, we'll gotta. we have to talk about the Libra gang. I mean, that's... it's. Yeah. I guess they don't show up until when, you know, they don't really become fully formed until maybe halfway through the... Yeah. Uh, the series but it is it's it's not the major spoiler you know there is some major spoilers there's some twists there's twists and mm. turns through the book and most of them you don't see coming and you love where they go when they actually arrive because like jesus did you really like write this and then it starts making sense you're like holy fuck that's fucking hilarious but uh okay so so uh the book obviously explores topics of class fascism racism police brutality late stage capitalism everything you mentioned uh, but what aspect of the story was the most fun for you uh guys to explore and why was it the cops <laughs> I I guess it was it was the cops but just like the buddy dynamic and having fun with the fact that they're committing a, a lot of violence in it that is both horrific and kind of funny and enjoyable to watch and you're they're not exactly the good guys 
whether you're rooting for them or not sort of depends. I don't, you know, you're not really um, rooting for them necessarily. You're just sort of watching what's happening in the uh, in the uninhabited zone in the bubble. I, I think the the best part of it, though, writing thinking about it was the dynamics of the economy because that sort of mm-hmm. drives the plot. Like Bubble City is a physical structure, but we also made it an economic uh, problem Mm. between the bubble and the us is that the economy is constantly booming and busting. And what that does is it creates new forms of crime and social hysteria and that the cops then have to react to. And the mayor who's a a pop star named the Prince, not to be confused with um, the pop star Prince Prince. on uh, (laughs) not to be confused with. uh, Yeah. uh, Different guy. But sort of similar, like, if, I mean, Prince is a great musician, but it, it sort of would be like if you had Prince or any deranged mm. ce- celebrity as your mayor uh, or president of the the whole area, you wouldn't want it. You yeah, wouldn't Did want, that happen uh, once for you, for the Yanks? Yeah, but, well, yeah, yeah. You, you wouldn't want a Ronald Reagan, for instance, <laughs> yeah, or a Donald Trump. But it's even, you know, oh, Donald Trump forbid. already existed when we wrote this. And we wanted to, even, you know, it's like, it's, just, it's almost like if Kanye West had become president and he yes. was a, but, but not just Kanye West, but like a Kanye West who was like this, you know, seventh generation royalty or something. Yeah. Like the, the, the prince in the, in the bubble has this kind of, uh, air to him. So anyway, the, the econ the economy stuff is, you know, there's each issue almost, uh, a sort of economic event happens and the prince sort of responds with, you know, maybe a stimulus program or some sort of economic scheme to keep things floating. And then it sort of creates another problem. And that's where the main story comes from, the sort of social unrest that comes from the economic uh, boom and bust. Yeah, we wanted to, uh, that part was really fun to write because it led us the the initial premise was that this thing is out of control and more and more as we wrote it we realized oh it's all about control and it's all about how the there's these forces that end up influencing people's lives that like can take control of their bodies and like grab people and how we are being sort of dragged along by this system that we're a part of but we're not really aware of the the depth or the the real thing that's happening. And so it ends up being sort of a critique of ideology, which uh, I was really happy where we got there from, you know, swamp monsters and shit that we can have a critique <laughs> of, and, and you of should, ideology and, and, in the book. And there's, and there's lines that are not very direct that critique ideology and understanding of what the status quo is, what normalcy is, how that can be overturned on its head uh, just through the depiction of uh, Bubble City and how, at least for me, it looks like an absolute possible uh, reality if we, you know, go even further awry the way we're going. But also there's like very direct shit that's like, uh, that's just uh, well thought of for example uh, there's a, there's a let's call it a scene where there's a cop protecting like a shop i'm not going to spoil much and they're they're the only two people there and then the shop owner tells the cop i am a property owner that means i rank higher than you you got to listen to me now <laughs> and that was like just that dynamic and uh, who actually the the piggies sorry the the shits and the swamp people uh, serve is uh, depicted and I mean, not that only is that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that is what it is all about, really, is protecting property. Uh, You know, that is a lot of what the police do. And you would probably there you would call everyone who's, you know, even the leftiest lefty is going to call the police under certain circumstances. I mean, yeah, it's our last resort. They're the ones who are they're the ones who are licensed. (laughs) And it's not (laughs) great that they're that they are are the ones who are tasked with solving a ton of uh, society's problems, including, you know, homelessness and drug addiction. Um, But they're the ones who are tasked with doing it by four and are licensed to use force to uh, to ultimately solve the problem. Yeah. And there's this other side to the because you asked us why we focused on the cops. And there's this other aspect in police fiction, but also in like our actual world uh, that the cops are charged with. Uh, investigation. There's no other social structure 
that we have where there is like an investigation into crime. The cops sort of Except have like this podcasters, dual... but yeah, podcasters yes. and cops. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but you, we are the people. Podcasters cops. should be issued a badge. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Fuck yeah! Fuck Here's yeah. your microphone. Uh, and a your police state to sound better gun. every day, baby. Uh. Uh, and so we can explore the world. Uh, of Bubble City, because a, a huge part of the book is just like getting introduced to this world and understanding that this world isn't that different from our own world and us being able to satirize our own world through this cartoon version of our world. And so we can explore that world through the cops because cops do investigations. And so it ends up being a form. This is uh, this is done a lot in cop fiction. I have learned from researching all the cop fiction is that it's a really great way of telling a story is an investigation. Mm. And so there is this aspect of cops that is, is intrinsic to their current form, which is investigation. So let's investigate this world of Bubble City. And uh, obviously the world of Bubble City the, develops uh, in what looks like fiction, as I mentioned before, a faraway dystopia filled with mutants, uh, poop cops, uh, pop star mayors, but it smells, if you know what I mean, just like our world, a bit dialed maybe to a 9 or a 10. Uh, most writing we tend to see in fiction generally, well, obviously inspired by the real world, tends to shy away from, you know, direct condemnation of the current status quo for, I don't know, fear of being called, quote unquote, political, even uh, though all of us here know the eternal cliche but uh, absolute truth that I'll utter for the seven billionth time that everything is political <laughs> and everything is ideological and uh, you know when they don't shy away from it in contrast we usually get you know vanilla liberal shit where the bad guy is the radical that is uh, pissed off with how things are run but because he's radical he wants to change it by for some reason blowing a bunch of people up or some shit and then the moderate hero comes in and says yeah what you're fighting against is bad but you're worse because of your methods mm. and that's supposed to you know be deep and wise and shit uh, not sure <laughs> which approach uh, is worse but uh, anyways we wanted to uh, ask you as uh, class conscious artists which I have uh, aptly knighted you to be why do you think uh, there's so little direct criticism of the status quo in most media and fiction in particular the I don't know, need for escapism uh, writer cowardice or, you know, it just doesn't sell, maybe. Uh, I think it's structural because usually the distribution, it's a, it's a commodity at the end of the day. When you're buying, if I'm going to be, I'm putting on my Marxist hat. I'm taking off my class consciousness hat and putting on my <laughs> Marxist hat. It's I a commodity. On that, baby. Yep. <laughs> uh, when something is a commodity, it has to, in, in many ways, even if it's an anti-commodity commodity, it the message is subverted. Like, I'm going to go to McLuhan mm. here that the medium is the message, then the medium is a commodity. Uh, you can't blow up MTV with a music video. You can't blow up comics. Like, we still want you to go out and buy the comic. Please go out and buy the right. comic. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and so, like, it, with TV, very much, I see it structurally as you want to maintain TV with TV. Uh, systems reproduce themselves, which is also one of the themes of Justice Warriors and like the deep down, the the main structural theme that I see in the book is that systems try to reproduce themselves. So it's very hard for something to subvert itself, to be self-destructive. And this is something that I see in cop media all the time is that there's always a, it's an Oedipal story. Like you, you mm -hmm. need to be taught how to reproduce society through the cop story. And there is a sort of subgenre of cop story, which are these very cynical movies like Demolition Man, which are anti edible which lead to the destruction of society. And, and so, like, from the perspective of an anti-commodity, a commodity that's going to interrupt commodities, you, it becomes anti edible which... It is a Are you following along? Strange tension. <laughs> Sorry, I'm gonna I I go off on 
I go to cloud. Please go do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. Go on. No, you got Nick loves it. This is this is normally his job. He's he's like, oh god, where's you got going? What deranged Slavic analogy is coming next? <laughs> it's the pole in me. Yeah. Oh, there you go. <laughs> fucking oh, the, the program race science returns. There you go. there you go. Of course he's fucking Slavic. Sorry, sorry, but but yes, yes. Only the Slavic mind can read Deleuze. Only a Slav. <laughs> I don't know if this is uh, exactly what you're asking or not, but I mean, it just got me thinking that, you know, most people that tell stories or, you know, make films, I mean, their primary goal is the medium, is to make a good comic, mm-hmm. is to make a good TV show. I mean, they might be political, but their 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 goal is not to inspire a revolution or to, you know dictate to you in the way that a political tract would be that is handed out on the street that is just pure and arguably ineffective uh you know pure political thought being barraged at you yeah Mm. so you know most people don't i you know i think that justice warriors on the one hand is probably the most political comic on the stands in 2023 but also like you know, we made a, a a a big attempt to make it readable for people who are actually aren't into the things that we're talking mm-hmm. about on this podcast. You know, like it, you you can kind of I think I think you could be a dummy and just read it and like it because it's fun and you know you would obviously get that there's political things going on, but we really while those things are kind of the a lot of the politics are front and center and obvious we also weren't like trying to offer solutions. I mean, mm-hmm. it's, it's not a big spoiler to say this is following the cops from the cops perspective. And it doesn't, uh, the society doesn't end in a leftist utopia by the end of it. That's not mm-hmm. really the point of justice warriors. So there's a critique of society, but I mean, it's hard to provide answers and say, Oh, this is what everyone should be doing because one that, you know, you typically makes a bad story. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Well, and also the antagonist is basically the group of people who are like, hey, we have a solution to the problems yeah. of the bubble. The and Because I do believe any that it is a liberal response to be like, oh, I know the solution to this. People just have to be polite on the internet this time. Or, uh, <laughs> yeah. or we have to do it like Nelson Mandela did it. Or uh, There's always this prescriptiveness, but that prescription is never adequate. And so we wanted to make we wanted to make fun of that. We wanted to make fun of the fact that we live in a neoliberal hell and there isn't any clear activity that we can take part in, uh, especially as for Matt and I as like northern white guys. There's no there's nothing we can actually do for for the most part that can change the outcomes of the power structures that control our lives. I think like what you said about the average person being able to pick up the the novel and and get something out of it and read it and understand it mostly. I think that's very that's true and I think that's important. Like the, the, the all the little things in there that are kind of ouchy, like there's one scene where the you know the the others to use the slur are robbing yeah. a convenience store, let's say under the influence and they, you know, they're getting baby formula. They're stealing baby formula. And there's like a little smiling yeah. frog on the tin that says, "Keep your baby alive." It's like <laughs> so that that little thing that you that you put in there, you're not doing this whole diatribe about, you know, theft to support your family, you know, is is required, yeah. it's you know, morally right and all that stuff. You're just suggesting like, "Hey, there's a reason people steal this kind of stuff." So it's I don't know, I think planting those little seeds goes a long way towards helping the average person kind of grapple with some more complex philosophical and, and political issues. I think that's great. I think you guys struck well, a really good tone. And that, you know, that came from real life um, because me and Ben have robbed stores at gunpoint for a baby formula because we <laughs> yeah. both yeah. had... Uh, you too? A, oh my God. <laughs> well, I thought we, I was the only one. No, the... No, the how the... Uh, how, how you get from our, our lives to... Uh, the opening scene you're describing, which is mutants that are controlled by uh, starfish parasites mm-hmm. uh, that, you know, control them. And starfish are getting the uh, baby formula for reasons that aren't explained, but maybe don't need to be. Is the real life thing is that I had a kid who had a um, in 2020 who had a, a milk protein allergy and needed 
not only baby formula, but a special kind. Mm -hmm. And most people aren't thinking about baby formula their whole lives or using it. Then when you have to use it, and you need to buy it so that your kid doesn't die. I mean, literally, you know, yeah. my kid could could not digest breast milk or regular formula. And the only thing he can eat is a newborn. And then you realize, oh, uh, you know, um, this stuff is extremely expensive and is locked at the store. Yeah. And it's locked so that people don't steal it. Well, it's not a jar of mayonnaise. It is my baby would literally die without it. And you just mm -hmm. realize... That I'm there are men who would die even, to you know, stop you from getting yeah, the yeah, baby formula yeah. for your yeah. for well, your child. And, and you know, Incredible. it's just you're just like, oh, in a world that made sense, certainly this would be provided <laughs> to people who <laughs> yeah. who needed it, and, and including formula, right? Including all sorts of things, uh, you know, starting in healthcare, <laughs> Heck, but maternity in my leave. of the world, going going very. <laughs> yeah, Jesus. You know, I mean, yeah. Well, I lived in the U.S. Uh, at the time. I lived in I live in Canada now. I'm from the U.S., but uh, yeah, I didn't have any uh, parental leave because um, I was mm. self employed, which just means figure it out. Uh, so <laughs> yeah. anyway, those those type of things are uh, you know coming put into the comic that are you know coming from some real world experience or mm -hmm. little things that we have that we're like, okay, how do I, how do I talk about this in a way that's not annoying and is actually and fun and, and shit, you yeah. know, it's like, well, uh, it's like, um, we're going to do RoboCop, but the bad guys are stealing formula, you know? That's what... <laughs> yeah. It's effective. It's super incredibly effective. It's, you know, it's simple, straightforward and you, you do it in like, one panel, two panels. I forget what it was, but yeah, that was one thing that stood out to me. So that was kudos to that. I think that was really and, effective. Uh, and you mentioned earlier how uh, you know the the world doesn't change and the uh, story pretty much ends where it's begun for most of the population of uh, Bubble City and the uh, outside area, uh, which, in my modest opinion, is always the right way to go when presenting. Uh, kind of a world, be it one that parallels ours or critiques very specific aspects of our world, uh, because uh, presenting a direct solution always ends up being either cliche, either overtly simplistic, or uh, hella, hella lazy. I mean, uh, what was it, Zizek, that uses uh, the relatively decent example of uh, what was that name with the guy with the anonymous mask? Fuck me. Oh, yes. uh, v, is v for Vendetta. Yeah. He wants to see v, v for Vendetta 2. What happens yeah, in the next day? Exactly. <laughs> you know, in the end, in the end, you know, you're like, okay, they're gonna overthrow this fascist, uh, this uh, fascist government, uh, uh, and so on. But you just ask, okay, what's gonna happen after they overthrow it? How are they gonna set up this society, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera. And it's lazy, yeah. exactly. In in like, uh, either go full on in and show that aspect, or show the reality of our world, which is uh, up until you know uh, all the contradictions otherwise <laughs> said in human terms uh, until people are too pissed off to fucking tolerate this that uh, nothing really changes so shit keeps uh, getting regurgitated shit keeps you know being put into uniforms and taken out on the street, et cetera, et cetera. So all, all I'm trying to say is that for, for some, uh, when they see a story which uh, uh, represents a fucked up world and then it ends without that world really being changed, uh, it might look like as if uh, not enough effort was put in and you know you, you shouldn't only talk about the development of your characters but the world in general. But uh, again, to repeat myself in my modest opinion, quite the opposite would be would be the lazier approach, the more naive approach, and uh, borderline opportunistic because it's uh, we don't really know how this uh, fucking thing will uh, will end. We can we can only guess and we can only hope it does. But uh, claiming that you do and then even uh, presenting it as uh, as something which uh, you know. Uh, 
characters in a in a film in a book and so on can achieve well oh you non-fictional motherfuckers cannot uh just feels uh relatively off-putting but um yeah it's uh, chauvinism it's yeah. it's complete uh self-aggrandizing that somehow mm. me who wrote this this uh, piece of work i i and the I fictional know. characters i created yeah. <laughs> they, we we managed to overthrow these bad guys uh, and you reading this still leaving uh, living in this uh this uh, backwards world you didn't manage to do it. It kind of feels uh, like that, you know, telling the telling audience, you bring fuck up you. Yeah. V for Vendetta, because I, I did reread V for Vendetta, I think, last year, and uh, for the first time in probably 20 years. And I really enjoyed it in a lot of ways and thought it was thought-provoking. But I found myself just being like... Who who the hell like yelling at the guy? Who the hell are you? What do you think? <laughs> who do you think you are? I mean, obviously they they he's living in a a fascist uh, a fascist society. And but who is that can just that can, that can just well, and I'm just saying that can justify a uh, a violent response, you know. Mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. it was I was like, huh, I don't know if I don't know if this guy should be. Uh, I don't know if this nut should be in charge of anything <laughs> he traps the, he traps the woman in the room and does the whole yeah uh, it's insane his the fa- response the fake torture <laughs> yeah, yeah. thing and then yeah you're like <laughs> you're like wow okay but i i you know may i don't know if uh, this is alan moore's intent because i know he's he's a big anarchist and everything but it's like I, 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 this is just me getting a different interpretation from, from art, which is a, what you're supposed to do. But I read it and I thought, oh, maybe, it, maybe you are kind of supposed to come away thinking, no, this guy's insane and doesn't mm-hmm. have all the answers because he's trapping a, this, a woman in this room and doing this whole rigmarole with torturing her. And, uh, any, any sane person is not going to say like, Oh man, this guy is fucking got yeah. it all figured out. We'll just Based. implement this plan tomorrow. <laughs> so, and we'll be so. we'll be rid of these uh, right wing governments. So I I don't uh, I don't really know. Yeah, I mean, in, though in if sense, you think it, about it. If, sorry, if you think about it, uh, most things aren't getting done because, you know, the masses are being placated by them giving us just enough. So if we quite literally ruin everything for absolutely everyone else to a greater extent, there's going to be more revolutionary fervor. You know, the argument, don't tip your yeah, fucking yeah. waiter so he gets more pissed off, you know, uh, uh, which is yeah. basically Guy Fox. <laughs> sorry for interrupting. Well, and I th- uh, yeah, accelerationism... I'm sure uh, appealed to me at some point in my like life. Everyone, and yeah. I think it's, uh, yeah. And I think uh, it just doesn't, it, everyone doesn't respond how you want, how you want yeah. them to, to, to any, to, to anything. So I, uh, that's what it's kind of based on is like, well, you know, everyone, if everyone gets as mad as me and has the, the solution that I want to implement, then, you know, we can, if everyone is on board with me and we're all V for Vendetta, uh, Guy Fox dudes, I mean, it'll overthrow the government. will just be like that. But unfortunately, it doesn't seem to work out that way. Well, because we lack the <laughs> yeah. social. The only thing that really exists, like the the social real, is liberal society. So we just end up mm-hmm. relying again on liberal society. So what do we get? We get policing. We get uh, privatization. Like we we would need to. I think about this a lot. You would need to actually construct a new set of social institutions yourself without the state and how the fuck you're going to do that without a penny to your <laughs> name. So there you go. We live in bubble city. Yeah. Even just our imagination is, is incredibly stunted on the issue. Like if, if yeah. 90% of people can't even fathom what an alternative would look like, you're not even starting at square one, right? You're starting at like square negative 30. You got to build back up to to zero understanding. You first got to unlearn everything and then learn something new. Well, and I think about this a lot too, because I, I really want, I, I'm hopeful about constructing things like co-ops. I don't think it's a mm-hmm. straight solution, but it at least creates a structure. Uh, the thing is, I think a lot of people are afraid of being in a co-op like if i go if i try to hire people into a co-op they're like i don't want to be responsible for a building or a business <laughs> yeah. i like the uh, we experience our social alienation as freedom mm-hmm. yeah 
we're already too deep into it. You know, you're not you're not introducing for the example of a co-op. You're not introducing the idea of you know join me in my co-op to literal babies. You know, humans uncorrupted <laughs> by the by the I ideological tried. snake of capitalism. Yeah, no, it <laughs> makes sense. No, there you go. That's the solution. The reverse guy hawk solution. So you don't have to torture them. You just kidnap babies. Oh my God, there we go. You just kidnap all the babies. You put them in your little commune, and that's what starts your your new world. I think people tried that and it was fucked up. Yeah, sorry. Well, yeah, there a lot of people did that in, yeah. the, in the 60s and everything. They were just like, I'm I'm not uh, joining the Black Panthers of the Weather Underground. I'm just getting out of here. Yeah. Yeah. Classic. my commune. And then, uh, oh, Adventurist I, bullshit. it turns out it's a sex cult. But <laughs> always, <laughs> always. Who could have known? <laughs> yeah. uh, um, I did want to say, though, that this is a perfect point to talk about the Libra gang because that mm-hmm. really is you know, we, we kind of took a lot of different things going on in society and ideologies and turned them into the Libra gang to explain these points that, that Ben was making about like people without an understanding of the material world will sort of grasp at a random ideology or one that's fed to them. In the case of the Libra gang to explain it, a, you know, what at first appears to be an anti police and, you know, fix the economy (laughs) movement uh, is a mutant gang that is a a zodiac based um, cyberpunk gang. They're they're sort of like if if Libras decided to become an armed resistance, and instead of uh, and they're like Maoists, but instead of trying to impose communism, they're trying to impose a uh, celestial based order where Libras are in charge of society, and then the other star signs will you know have different. Uh, different levels of society they're assigned to with cancers being uh, proposed for elimination. Zodiac <laughs> racists, quite literally. Yeah. Yeah. But, but it really was, is sort of like they're, they know something is wrong. They say things that you can agree with. They know that, the, that Bubble City and the world that they live in is fucked up and their solution makes no sense at all. Mm-hmm. But in absence of like a solution that does make sense, a solution that doesn't make the sense. The vacuum is filled. Yeah, uh, there's a Zizek bit. I'm a big Zizek guy, uh, except recently. He sucks now. Yeah, except uh, recently, yeah, I was going to say. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Except Fuck like the know. past 10 years. Oh. Uh, he, like, he no ageism been... on the show, but yeah, after they turn 60, <laughs> lock him up. Yeah, just, just forbid the internet gets taken away. My after grandpa has literally 70, been ruined. I just saw yeah. my grandpa. I went back to my whole country. I saw my grandpa. This motherfucker talked about uh, the literally uh, how the the war in Palestine, like uh, in Gaza right now, is uh, so that they can take all the Palestinians and take them to Ukraine in the Donbas, where uh, they're gonna put them <laughs> after they kill all the Russians. Like that. That that is when you give a wow. very old guy the internet. I'm sorry. Uh, a bit of ageism for uh, for for a change, but uh, please. Continue. No, you should have to. Do like a captcha to get online, but like solve. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like remember your yeah. grandchildren's middle names. <laughs> uh, yeah. So there's this idea that like if you strip away some ideological structure, like if you strip away any aspect of society, you'll get to the truth, right? If you stri- strip away the illusion, then on the other side is the truth, and that it the truth is. R- a real structure that exists outside of your own mind that you can reach just through a destructive act rather than mm-hmm. having to take responsibility for the construction of something. That's like a central load-bearing myth to our society is that uh, you get rid of an illusion and then you have the truth. No, you mm. get another shittier illusion. Often much, much, uh, much shittier. I mean, that's why we call them uh, uh, reactionary ideologies, and that's exactly where a lot of their power lies in, is that uh, while well, compared to materialist ideologies that, you know, actually analyze the world, they're like, okay, th- th- this is how it's structured. Th- these are the socioeconomic issues that need to be addressed in order for the power disbalance to be, uh, you know, reconfigured. Let's use those terms. Uh, while when it 
comes to fascist fascistic ideology, you can latch on to absolutely any aspect of society. I mean, we've seen them latching on to uh, vaccination. We've seen them mm-hmm. latching on to the uh, treatment of uh, trans people, younger trans people, and so on. We've seen them latch back back in the day, obviously, to just simply race, religion, and so mm-hmm. on. Uh, and it's very difficult sometimes, especially for uh, everyday people to identify what is being uh, done to them, which, as you beautifully put, is basically moving the attention away from both pol- potential real solutions, but also from uh, you know the status quo over to another fictionally created uh, potential enemy. And that is why I was particularly, particularly enamored by the uh, by the fascists, uh, if I could call them that, in in your story, the Lever Gang, as you mentioned, uh, because you went with the most ultra mega giga fucking uh, nonsensical and ultra basic type of shit, which is uh, with the fucking zodiac sign, and yet. <laughs> You can absolutely see it happening. You, you, it's absolutely oh, yeah. 100% possible. If we had lived in a society that still, for example, praises uh, astrology as like the main religion or like the main uh, caste system of the country, and you had a bunch of motherfuckers, in this case, the Libras that went out and that redefined themselves as, uh, as the top caste, uh, you could very much so run a hyper-hierarchical society based on... Uh, superiors and inferiors, which at the end of the day is the baseline uh, definition of fascism. And the second I, I saw that developing, and I'm like, and when, you know, one of the characters goes out and actually says, you know, what they're about, and up until that moment you're hoping, oh man, these guys are some legit like uh, revolutionaries and shit, and you're like, holy fucking <laughs> shit, just a regurgitation of the same thing that we have, but in, uh, in a different form. And to an extent, can you even... Can sorry for the rant, but can you really even call a society based on astrological signs that much more insane than what we've had historically and have yes. right now? <laughs> that is exactly the takeaway I think that we we want readers to have is to you look at their ideology and it's and it's obviously insane. They're presented as the bad guys, you know, in the structure of the story. And there is the, at first, you know, presented as like, okay, well, this appears to be, you know, have a leftist critique to it. The cops are bad. There is sort of, you know, there's protests in the uninhabited zone and this movement is rising. And then you're like, oh yeah, no, this isn't, uh, this isn't Black Lives Matter. You know, this is <laughs> it's something different. You know, you just, you describe them as fascists, which I don't think we... Th- I, I didn't, didn't think, think of them, them as fascists, but you're correct. It is fascism. That's yeah, what I mean, we're they ultimately critiquing. want to... Yeah, they're talking about replacing, you know, one twelfth of the <laughs> uh, the the leadership is will now you know the the bubble will be uh, emptied and all the libras will go in, uh, cancers will be eliminated, and then you know they sort of are vague about exactly what happens to each each of the other ones. But, but the economy is probably you know, going to stay the same. If, yeah, exactly. well, you know where we're going. Yeah, your working class and your servant class and. Uh, uh, then you you know we you have people claiming to be Libras and there's a there's a joke in there somewhere about you know getting your birth certificate uh, <laughs> you know cha- changed and a, a certain percentage of society is now claiming that they actually are Libras and that's probably how it would play out and mm-hmm. I guess it you know at the time we were writing it it was 2020 2021 you have all these things going on that influenced it so first of all. A lot of people are into Zodiac stuff online and Instagram and, you know, maybe and get a, sucked in into right wing movements. Now there's a but, crystal mommy to Q and on. Crazy, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I've always kind of enjoyed it as nonsense and, and made fun of this kind of stuff. A friend actually got me into uh, not into tarot, but did a tarot reading for me. And like a couple years ago, and I was like, I had this epiphany about, I was like, oh, it's just, it's like, re, it's making a story for yourself with, mm-hmm. with pictures and they have meanings and then you just construct and that's why it works on you because whether something good in your life is going on or something bad, you imp- you project meaning onto it and that's why people love this stuff. I mean, that's an obvious observation, but going through it for the first time and having a tarot reading and actually finding myself being like, oh, this 
actually kind of makes sense with what's mm-hmm. going on in my life right mm-hmm. now made me realize the uh the power of it and why people do get into it so anyway uh to finish this thought it's it's you know anti-vax and q non stuff it's the guys trying to kidnap the governor of michigan <laughs> uh, for lockdowns it's it's also but it does include some uh, liberal critique as well you know like they, they use sort of DEI lingo which you know again was big at the time and still is but you know I see as people there is a certain type of liberal that kind of gets obsessed with that stuff and thinks mm-hmm. that saying the right terms and repeating these phrases has a kind of a power like an incantation to get rid of mm-hmm. oppression and it doesn't yep. It just is a way to try to get people to agree with you and say those terms so that you can get it, try to get everybody on the same page. But it feels like trying to force people onto the same page because everyone's like, I don't know, we don't really normally talk like this. And can't we just... And I love, I love how one of the main pro- pillars of the new society that uh, the Libras are going to create is that everybody's just going to be vibing and chilling. I don't remember exactly <laughs> what term it is. And it's like, it's like, like the uh, ironically, if I was building like, uh, like, a you know, let's call it a radically liberal or fascist uh, uh, movement, I would go that direction. I would make it as broad as fucking possible obviously mm-hmm. while still targeting a particular group which is not letting us chill and vibe because the cancers always ruin the chill and the vibe so if we all want to chill and vibe like as a society we must remove those uh, goddamn fucking cancers but yeah sorry uh, about that <laughs> <laughs> no, you're a cancer. Oh God, uh, a pole and a cancer. So Slavic and a cancer. Literally, my father. Uh, you're about yeah, to start every shouting. Every pole is arch. a cancer. Uh, <laughs> uh, you said that, not me. Uh, you mean you could have been saved, but you embraced. Yeah, I'm taking that sound bite so out of context. Is, uh, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm put I'm it on a soundboard. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Put it in a meme with a. Uh, you know, a Hitler's face, and it says, <laughs> yeah, the quote, and says, Ben, then it says, what, visual king of the left, Ben Clarkson. <laughs> Every pole is a cancer. Pole is a cancer. <laughs> 10 out of 10 Hitlers agree. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. But in, like hardcore contrast to our uh, vibe, uh, vibey uh, fascists, uh, there's a great character in the plot, a dialectical fortune teller, let's call her, who is the only one kind of making any sense in this entire story, <laughs> uh, who gets, you know, to avoid spoilers totally crushed by capital i was very proud of that one uh, at one point uh, kind of showing us the direction of you know total abandonment of hope in this uh, world far too lost uh, for saving uh, do you think and we can uh, start wrapping up with uh, this kind of topic do you think we're as fucked as uh, bubble city and its surrounding or is there more hope for us we're totally fucked we're totally fucked <laughs> uh, because there there is no unless we get to a point where we can form some sort of consciousness because class consciousness for the most part in the West is on the decline still. I don't think that there is a big upswing in the idea of what my relationship to production is, because for the most part, we try to alienate people from production. That's our main mm. idea. Uh, of how mm-hmm. to deal with a crisis is to offshore as much production as possible to move people towards much more speculative value creation. So I mm-hmm. don't think that there is a, yeah. a viable identity within class for the the West or the North. So I think that you would have to construct some other form of consciousness. And I think that that's a, a hard sell and I don't know how that would be done. I do think that that's what some people are trying to do. Um, I think that's what we're trying to grasp at is to instill in people Mm -hmm. a more abstract understanding of what the fuck is happening around us. Mm -hmm. And we, when I talk about this, I talk about this with my wife all the time because she's uh, very involved in the environmental movement here in Canada, uh, that we need to form some sort of abstract consciousness that engages with one, the environment, because that's the thing that's really going to shoot our legs out from under us. And mm. that might come from a a material formation like class consciousness, where you start living a shitty life because of the environment you live in. It's definitely terrifying every time it's fire weather. 
like it was it was real apocalyptic and people went really yeah. insane this year because you couldn't breathe you couldn't go outside you couldn't do anything and that exposure just like the labor movement was exposed to the the material conditions of production i think the being exposed to the material conditions of the degradation of the environment will create some sort of consciousness but i'm a pessimistic materialist i think that the material world is in the driver's seat and that we are all in a way reactionaries matt give us some hope <laughs> no i'm slightly more hopeful than ben it's not hard it's not hard to be i mean you know i don't, I don't have any illusions about i don't know that uh, a leftist utopia and is not going to be created in my lifetime nor will uh the environmental problem be completely solved but I, you know, I guess I, I disavowed accelerationism earlier, but then, you know, what Ben is saying, I agree with, which is that as people are exposed to the vagaries of the market and environmental collapse, there's a lot more awareness and distress about it. Um, I mean, we do see a m- massive uptick in unionization and strikes happening. So there is, uh, hopefully that will continue. I mean, the only way that anything is going to change is through a mass movement that can that can actually affect change and put pressure on a system uh, using, in my opinion, a variety of tactics that all uh, work in unison from, you know, pe- pe- liberals who want to knock on doors to mm-hmm. people who want to go read how to blow up a pipeline and, mm-hmm. you know, go do industrial sabotage, which. I'm not endorsing uh, in any way. But <laughs> Horrible. Like, very bad. I, 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 but Hypothetically. I do think, yeah. coming a, on my fucking show saying this shit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but just as a, uh, I think as a matter of fact, we're going to be seeing more of that yeah. in the future, you know? like yeah, that. Yeah. I'm actually surprised there hasn't been more because there was like mm-hmm. a big kind of deep green uh, radicals in the 90s and... But they all got Everyone's stitched up more. too. They did a real number on well, the Well, yeah. This, we could talk an hour for them, and I'm not necess- I'm not really an anti civ uh, deep green guy. But I, yeah. um, anyway, I think we're going to see. A- <laughs> so, uh, and the and the fortune teller. I did want to just say that you know I am real proud of that part. It was basically us, not just trying to have someone in there describe you know the actual world in a in a way that we kind of agree with but to show that in this world materialism is a is marginalized and kooky and basically no one cares about it as much as in our world how do people really take the zodiac seriously if you mm-hmm. if you see someone uh posting memes about it all the time and then you said hey what do you think about this they'd say oh i just think it's fun to think about it's stupid yeah, yeah. like mm. <laughs> that's how everyone in the us <laughs> thinks about materialism to the extent that they Shit. ever do it's just like Fuck. oh yeah like a like a you mean those <laughs> scam those scam artists you have to pay 10 bucks to tell you what the problem is in the world yeah. and then you pretend you pretend it if, uh, applies to you yeah no that's uh, i know them i i tried to imagine when we were writing that segment what a normal person would think of yeah. coming across because mm-hmm. i i know a lot of normal people and they've never heard this perspective in their entire life it sounds like gobbledygook and it's incredibly scary to them too because uh they've never heard the perspective before so who knows if it's a thing that you can believe or not and i really do i i wanted the reader to almost go through a scary moment where they're almost like Mm. the libra gang where they're being convinced of something uh, that they're afraid of and like oh that sounds like it makes a little bit of sense oh thank god that she's gone like that that is giving me what's what's that uh, english term uh an additional layer of let's call it self-awareness because i never actually thought about it in that context holy shit do like my quote-unquote <laughs> uh, cringe apolitical friends just think i'm, I'm like uh into zodiac signs but yeah. in politics and shit they uh-huh. probably think oh that. Yeah. Uh, d- <laughs> yeah ah he's not gonna start talking about this fucking shit again okay uh, yeah 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 capitalism bad yeah yeah you got me okay yeah good 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 okay you let's you sound... have a beer yeah mm-hmm. describing <laughs> how the world works makes you sound crazy pretty yeah. much pretty much oh <laughs> certified oof 
certified <laughs> oof uh, <laughs> and with that certified oof uh, and that beautiful uh, beautiful sentence that uh, might actually be the title of uh, of this episode uh, what did you say uh, saying how the world works makes you look crazy uh, mm. we will wrap up this absolutely brilliant episode and leave a bit of space for these uh, two uh, brilliant men to come on to this show again with all that being said, before I go on and rant too much, uh, boys, could you please, please, please tell our audience where they can find your work? Uh, which, by the way, hardcore criticism. You could, like, I want to buy the hard copy, but I can't in Europe. But I know you'll fix that. <laughs> uh, but uh, no, uh, please tell our, our audience where they can find your work. Thank you for coming on. Uh, you can find me on x.com the everything app at fuck ben you. clarkson fuck you I'm so, we will censor that <laughs> every time i say Just it i a, get a, a beep yeah uh yeah uh, you can find me on x.com the everything app and uh, uh, uh hopefully there's a, like a, a you guys could be so gracious to uh, post a Simon and Schuster link to uh, yeah. a portal oh, where you can buy send the me a hundred thousand links. I'm a plug that stuff. Don't worry. Uh, yeah, c- please, please buy the book. Please buy our commodity so that we can get money <laughs> and then invest that into the production of more commodities. <laughs> Keep an eye out for maybe a potential sequel to Justice Warriors, Holy which shit. is yes. potentially already uh, in production. Uh, uh, potentially already well into production, which we, uh, I'm sure we yeah, uh, you, um, can't talk about. You uh, you mentioned us, you know, oh, maybe there's more Justice Warriors. I mean, th- if it's not clear to people, and I guess we didn't explain it, this is intended to be a world that we can tell stories in forever. Like, yes. Ben and I have a ton of ideas, and uh, the general gist is that it's like we want each volume to sort of be about a different aspect of society. It's like The know? Wire. Yeah, I mean, honestly, like we, we like you know, one volume might be about uh, drugs. One volume is we want to do uh, like what the Olympics or sports look like in this crazy world, what an election might look like. So hopefully we, we get around to all those. The response has been good. But um, yeah, we intend this is a, a, a creator on comic that we hope to go on like indefinitely really yeah to ensure that those things happen please buy the book <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, feed these men yeah. who, who Art- doesn't want the extended bubble city universe ladies yeah. and gentlemen baby and- formula baby formula is expensive my kid doesn't need it anymore but i uh i You've like developed it developed a taste for it <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, and a good scotch i'll tell you really what, hit the spot yeah i'll tell you that stuff is so it smells so bad mm. it's unbelievable huh. I don't know if I don't know if you uh, have had a kid if you've smelled uh-huh. breast milk or if you just buy it you know from your like kind of uh, your dom or something you buy you know because you have a, a fetish breast milk sweet smells nice sweet light baby formula disgusting yeah disgusting <laughs> slop yeah it's it's I can't believe it. And yeah. can we Coming find you, Matt, on about. x.com, the everything oh, yeah. app? <laughs> I, I, oh, yeah. I had That's to take the opportunity. I'm about to throw my pen at my screen, you <laughs> son of a bitch. Uh, I take back everything I said about you coming back on. I'm on uh, all the major social media networks as Matt Boars. Pretty easy to find me. Lovely. Lovely. And uh, with that being said, uh, go uh, buy the book, uh, get these people uh, some baby milk and potentially an extended Bubble City uh, universe. Once again, thank you very much uh, for coming on. Also, thank you very much to all of our patrons without whom this show would not be able to run. Go check out the link after you check out Justice Warriors. uh, And in return for supporting the show and helping us stay independent, you can receive plenty of shit like early episodes, uh, bonus episodes, Discord communities, direct chats, and so on and so on. Breast milk. And with yeah. all... Uh, breast milk, yes. We're, <laughs> yeah. we're adding breast milk to the to the many things. Direct from Ugopnik, uh, a source. <laughs> uh, we, we'll use Hakim for, like, uh, doctor shit. We use me for uh, under-the-counter alcohol, and uh, JT has a child, so maybe he can supply breast milk. <laughs> oh, my God, that's disgusting. Great. <laughs> All right, y'all, go on, get out of here. We hope you enjoyed the episode. This has been The Deprogram. I'm JT. I'm Ugopnik. I'm Matt Bors. I'm Ben Clarkson. Libra gang, Libra gang. <laughs>